and welcome back to Tony Technician's channel. And today on Tech Tip Tuesday, I have something pretty important. Now, uh, this should be helpful for a lot of people. A lot of people also probably already know a lot of information about this. But a lot of people might have never used them because they don't really know how. And that is a torque wrench. A lot of people might have just done things uh, with a normal ratchet, tightened it to where they felt comfortable or use torque sticks, which are these, which limit the amount of torque that you can put on something. But those aren't necessarily the safest ways to go about things. They can actually be pretty dangerous. Even using torque sticks, they still recommend that you double check them with a torque wrench. Um, but that's still a great product. But doing things by hand, it's not, especially when it comes to wheels, axles, differentials, Important things like that to where if that's not torqued down right, it could cause you to injure other people. So torque on those things are very important. It shouldn't just be done by hand or by, feel, by feeling. Uh, but many other things also take torque ratings, such as everything on an engine, uh, and they can be either measured in inch pounds, foot pounds, or newton meters. They also have many different styles of torque wrenches. Uh, and I'll get into those here in a little bit. But today I'm going to focus on the most commonly used one, which is the click style. Now, a lot of people, especially in the professional field, are moving towards the electronic version because they're supposed to be more accurate and you can do angles with them without having to use a special tool with your torque wrench. And I'm going to go over that as well. But they come in all three drive sizes, or even more than that. But for normal automotive use, the three drive sizes. Your quarter inch and three eight. Your quarter inch is always in uh, inch pounds. Your three eighths is either in inch pounds or foot pounds, and then your half inch is usually just in foot pounds. And obviously, the longer the torque wrench, the more torque or the higher the torque rating that wrench is going to go up to. But we'll get into that. I'll show you how to read the settings on there, how to set the torque wrench, and how to use it properly. So. I hope you guys enjoy, and if you do, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thank you guys. This is your average click style torque wrench. Now, there are a few different styles of torque wrenches, but like I stated, the click style being your most common type. Some of the others are beam, deflecting beam, slipper, click, no hub wrench, electronic torque wrench, programmable, programmable electronic torque wrench, with the angle feature, uh, mechatronic torque wrenches and hydraulic torque wrenches. But I'll post a few random photos of those different styles here. Some of the more common ones being the electronic and beam style. But here you see I have a 3 8 drive torque wrench from Tecton and a half inch drive torque wrench from Matco. So one thing, first off the bat, is if you're a professional, uh, Tekton does uh, do a good job. They are a cheaper torque wrench. I don't know if I would use it all the time in the professional field. Not because it's not of quality, because they are decent. But the selector switch goes in the opposite direction, where this is tightening, where on a lot of your normal ratchets, tightening is this direction. So it is backwards. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer, Tekton is great. Pittsburgh will work fine. They got Cobalt, Craftsman, all of those out there. Uh, but my Matco here is a really nice one, but just the normal click style. First, we're gonna go into calibration. Now, with torque wrenches, it's either one year, or I think it's around 5,000 clicks. So for a do-it-yourselfer, uh, you won't have to get it calibrated as often as a professional that uses their torque wrench all the time. Also, when working, if you're an automotive tech, then you'll probably need more than one torque wrench. Most normal do-it-yourselfers uh, do can just get by with like a half-inch torque wrench because most of the time you're using it for um, tires and stuff like that, which require a little bit more torque than what a, your average 3 8 drive will put out. So, to get them calibrated every year, it's anywhere from $25 to $100 roughly. But if you're a professional and you have a Snap-on or Matco guy, most of the time they can calibrate it for you, no charge. But if not, then most of the time you got to send your torque, torque wrench out to get recalibrated. Uh, 
good ones are usually plus or minus 2% on the torque setting. So if you're going at like 200 foot pounds, it could be off by uh, a few foot pounds. But the more expensive torque wrenches, the, the tighter the uh, calibration is going to be. So one important thing to remember about torque wrenches is you never want to drop them because of the calibration. These are a precision instrument and if you drop them you could throw out the calibration. So you want to be very careful with the torque wrenches. Don't go beating them on things or dropping them from heights. Also, every time you're done using them, you want to zero them out. That doesn't mean turn them all the way down past their lowest setting. That just means take it to the lowest setting. I'll go into that when I show you the readings and how to read them. Also, I'll show you how to do angles with a normal style torque wrench. Uh, also, do not use a torque wrench as a normal ratchet or breaker bar. They are not meant to be used for those things. And the important thing about using a torque wrench is to have the proper torque on the fastener. You can look up the information of whatever you're doing, whether it's lug nuts, ax axle nuts, uh, anything like that. You need to look up the information for your vehicle, make sure you get it correct and torque it to that setting. You don't want to go too much because then you can stretch or break the fastener and if you don't have it tight enough then it could come loose and you could be in a lot of trouble. Um, other things you want to remember when using a torque wrench you don't ever or you should try not to use extensions on your torque wrenches because the longer the extension uh, the more it's going to throw off the uh, torque setting. I think it's every three or six inches you need to up your torque by I think it's five. Don't quote me on that. If you guys know please drop it down in the comments. But one thing you definitely don't want to be using on a torque wrench are joints like this because there there is play in them that can throw your setting off especially ones like this where it allows rotation in here that can really throw off the, the setting on your torque wrench. So whatever you do don't use uh, universal joints. Extensions you can use because obviously there are those situations where you need to get to something and you can't reach it So just remember you have to adjust for the length of extension that you use uh, But other than that let's get into actually reading and setting these torque wrenches I said there are three drive sizes for your normal do-it-yourself or automotive tech when you get into the diesel, they have three quarter and stuff like that for heavier duty applications. But your more common ones are quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch. I only have a three eighths and half inch. A quarter inch would be used for you know things that are uh, being tightened in inch pounds. You can also get a three eighths drive in inch pounds. This one is in foot pounds. But uh, if you're doing stuff like that, it's mainly little things on an engine, such as the oil pan, valve covers, stuff like that, that are usually in inch pounds. But this 3 8 drive goes from 10 foot pounds to 80 foot pounds. And then on the reverse side, it goes from 13.6 to 108.5 Newton meters. So whenever you're tightening something, make sure you're reading the right side of the torque wrench and make sure you got the right uh, torque reading. Uh, from wherever you got it, whether it's your manual for your car or online. Then this half inch torque wrench goes from 50 foot pounds to 250 foot pounds or 74.6 newton meters to 345.7 newton meters. I'm going to try and show you guys that right there. I'll post a picture so it's a little bit easier to read. And then on this Tecton, the, th the thing I do like about this is they actually have it in black so it's a lot easier to read. Sorry about the lighting guys. It is easier to read. So now we're actually going to get into setting the torque wrench. I'm going to be torquing my lug nuts to 80 foot pounds for this demonstration. And normally when doing wheels you would not be using a 3 inch or 3 eighths drive torque wrench. You would be using half inch. But you gotta remember, all torque wrenches have a locking feature for these click styles, and there are a few different designs. The design here is a locking uh, nut on the bottom that you loosen, and then you're able to adjust your setting. And then whenever you get to your desired setting, you lock the nut down. Then, with this half inch style, it has a pull tab. You pull this down, 
and you rotate the handle to your desired setting and then releasing it locks it in place. There are also ones with a ring right here which you would turn to unlock and turn the opposite direction to lock. So always remember to lock it before using it because you don't want to be torquing something down and turning the handle at the same time causing you to torque it to the wrong setting. But I'm going to show you how to set it to 80 foot-pounds and then we'll uh, do a little demonstration. Okay, so for this demonstration of setting foot-pounds on a torque wrench, I'm going to be using this 3H drive Tecton. And right here we're zeroed out at 10 foot-pounds and it goes up to 80 foot-pounds. I'm going to set it to 25 foot-pounds for you. The main shaft has the readings by 5 foot-pounds, so it goes 10, 15, 20, 25, all the way up to 80 alternating sides. And then around the ring of the handle, you have increments of 0.5, so 0, 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, and further on. You have 10 marks around the entire ring that bring you back to a whole 10 foot-pounds. So let's say you wanted to go to 25 foot-pounds. First, unlock whatever your locking feature is. Rotate the handle up to 25 foot-pounds. Line it up straight with the zero. And there you have 25 foot-pounds. But before you use it, make sure to go ahead and lock it back down and you're ready to go. Let's say you wanted to go to 27 foot-pounds. You would lock it or unlock it and move it from the zero. One, two. So you have 25 plus two equals 27. Lock it down and you're good to go. So real basic setup, real easy to use. And it goes the same way with this as well. But don't forget to zero your torque wrench back out to the lowest setting and then lock it. And most torque wrenches will come in a nice little blow molded case to keep them from getting wet or rusting. And you should keep them stored in that. But we're going to use the half inch drive and we're going to go tighten some lug nuts now. You want to grab your desired uh, socket for whatever you're tightening. Try not to use an extension, sometimes it is necessary. But we're going to set this to 80 foot pounds for this demonstration. So like before, just rotate this up to 80, making sure that the zero is on the 80 mark. So here, hopefully you guys can see that, the zero is lined up with the 80 foot pounds and it is locked in place with this de device. Make sure you have it set for tightening. And then what you're gonna do is just simply slowly tighten the uh, fastener until you hear that click. Now once you hear that click, you're good. Demonstration purposes, so you can hear the click. We are now at 80 foot-pounds. If you had to go to 85, 100, whatever, you just adjust your torque wrench accordingly. So here is 85. Once again, slowly rotate the torque wrench. You don't want to be jerking on it, uh, doing it real fast. It does throw off the calibration. You won't get a correct reading. You also want to make sure the threads and uh, bolt or whatever fastener you're tightening has clean threads and nothing is messed up because if it's cross-threaded, or you have gunk in the threads, it will also throw off your torque reading. So make sure everything's clean and good to go. Now I'm gonna show you how to use an angle meter. So this is a device that you can use with your click style torque wrench in order to help you set angles. Because when rebuilding things, sometimes it calls not only for a torque setting, but a degree or an angle uh, after that torque setting. Whether it be set it to 50 foot pounds and back it off 45 degrees, or set it to 90 foot-pounds and add 90 degrees. This will help you. It has a rotating ring right here, which you would just simply loosen, and this allows the needle to spin freely. This part will attach to your torque wrench. Your socket will go here, so like this, and then this will be on your torque wrench. This is used to hold the dial in the correct position. So. As you can see here, hopefully you guys can read that, it does go zero through 360. And when you get it locked in place, you will set it to zero. So you would loosen this, put the needle on zero degrees, wherever that may be. Ours being right here. Lock that down at zero. And then whenever you apply your torque wrench, 
it will tell you how many degrees you're actually turning it. Most of the time, uh, a lot of people will get the reading of you know 90 degrees and they'll just do it without an angle. But if you want to be precise, these are used for the click style. But if you have an electronic one, uh, it will read angles on the digital screen. So I'm going to show you using this and then we'll finish up the video. Okay, YouTubers, so here we have it attached to the torque wrench. What you're going to do is you're going to apply it to your uh, fastener or whatever you're tightening. You're going to take your clamp. You're going to clamp it to something to hold this steady. Then you're going to take your ring. You're going to find your zero, which is right here. And then say you have to, you have it set, but now it requires you to set the angle. So in order to go 50 degrees, you would just simply rotate your torque wrench until you get to 50. So there we have changed the angle by 50 degrees on top of whatever your torque reading is. So it's a really handy device in order to get real accurate readings, not only on torque, but angles as well. But it is a separate piece that you would have to order. They don't come with your torque wrench. Okay, YouTubers, so that's basically it as far as using a torque wrench. I do know a few people who have stayed away from using torque wrenches just because they don't really know how they work. They are pretty simple, but it does take uh, some information to know how to figure them out. It is a simple process, and I hope this video was very helpful for you. Uh, I showed you how to set the torque setting. I showed you the angle meter that you can use with a click style. Uh, whether you want to add degrees or take away a certain amount of degrees to a fastener, always make sure to reset it to its lowest setting to take the tension off the spring inside of the torque wrench. Uh, be very careful with them. Don't go dropping them or beating, on, beating them on things. Try not to use extensions. You can, but just be aware it does slightly affect your torque rating. Also, stay away from universal joints or flex joints because that will throw off your calibration. Uh, calibrate them once a year or around 5,000 clicks. Um, and you can get them from cheap as far as like $20 all the way up to a few hundred dollars through Snap-on or Matco or anything like that. It also depends on the style of torque wrench you get. But I hope this video was helpful. Sorry about the cicada across the street. It's really annoying. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you noticed I forgot to mention anything or if you just have something, maybe you want to ask a question, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I'm getting ready to do my gift giveaway video. Uh, I have an idea of what I'm going to give away, but stay tuned for that, and I hope to see you guys next time.